Hey guys, welcome to the Best Practices Show. My name is Kirk Barrett. I'm your host today and you are in for a huge treat as I've got one of my dear friends in dentistry on, Dr. Uchi Odiatu. And some of you might be thinking, how the heck do I talk to my patients about nutrition or where do I even start? Because I got to put this all together for them in this optimal oral health picture. And there's nobody better when it comes to that conversation than Uch. So a uh, couple things, I'm just going to say this. If you haven't been here before, I want to do two things. Number one, I just want to welcome you to an incredible community of people that are just committed to learning. So there's no egos here. Uh, feel free to ask questions. Number two, I want to encourage you wherever you listen to podcasts to subscribe. I don't care if it's iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever, make sure you hit the subscribe button below so that you can keep showing up with us every single week. You're going to see every single week. We'll bring you a new key opinion leader in dentistry with some great thinking so that you can create a better practice and a better life. Also, if you haven't joined our private Facebook group, make sure you join us over there. We're still trying to figure out how all these things work, but we started it last year in the COVID conference and over 13,000 of you just joined and it's very cool just to see everybody connect. So make sure you check that out. It's the best practices powered by Act Dental Private Facebook Group. Now, I want to introduce my good friend, Ooch. What's Hello. up, brother? How are you, man? I'm good. I'm All good. Right. Another good yeah. day on planet Earth. I am uh, raring to go. Yeah, raring to go. Now, I always say this about you. Like, I love you dearly. It's so much fun to have you on. Um, number one, you always bring great energy, great thinking, and um, you just bring this component to dentistry that people – we haven't seen before. And I, I love telling this story and I don't mind. I'm going to tell it every single time. So I was speaking at the Chicago uh, Chicago midwinter meeting and I got two of my team members with me and they're like, you know, we've kind of heard like, you're, is it okay if we go over and watch Ooch? I'm like, you're going to watch Ooch today. They're like, yes. And they went outside. And of course the line goes all the way down. You got the velvet ropes with the security guards and the bouncers and everything. Uh, and it's just so much fun. So I just love having you on today. We're going to be talking about five things that every dentist needs to know about nutrition. But if people don't know who Uchi Odiatu is, let's start there. Okay. 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 So um, I'm a practicing dentist uh, in Canada. I'm still an international member of the ADA. So, you know, U.S. dentistry is dear to my heart. Um, I've been speaking since lecturing at dental pro programs probably for 16 years, seven countries, 500 lectures. I've been an invited guest on about 400 TV and radio shows since 2002. I've written a couple of books on fitness, more about the mindset than the how. Everyone always argues about the how. I'm talking about why and philosophy is number one. I'm double certified as a, as a personal trainer, professional member of the American College of Sports Medicine, yoga, certified yoga instructor, certified boot camp instructor, if I'm trying out loud. Last two years ago, I got licensed as a Zumba instructor. So um, there is no end to my curiosity about wellness, and the key thing I like sharing with my colleagues is that to bring it chair side, it makes you um, seem like that authentic voice because every patient almost seems to look at a healthcare provider that sees all of them and not just their hormonal system, not just their gingiva, not just their mind. Integrate the knowledge and you can really um, get patients better. So my passion is igniting my fellow healthcare providers to look at patients from head to toe and enjoy uh, a more integrative uh, healing journey. How's that? Yeah, I love that. Now, I always love to talk about the why before the how, because we're going to get into these five components. The nutrition conversation is always an interesting one, you know, and this is a big part of it. I feel like there's so much of someone's health related to this whole area. Um, and you've seen it for years as a practicing dentist, you teach people in now nutrition. Why is this just hard? Why is the nutrition conversation hard for dentists and team members? Yeah, great question. I think it's confusing because everyone eats. So everyone thinks they're an expert. Like everyone goes, uh, do you eat healthy? Yeah, I eat healthy. Tell me some details. Uh, I go through a drive through twice a day. I drink um, half a gallon of vodka at night. That's my liquid. So I don't put any juice in because juice is fattening. So right. it, it goes on and on and on. So what I really do is uh, everyone eats. So everyone thinks they're an expert, which is everyone eats, but not everyone's an expert because the, the, the visual nature of how, how we look and how sick we are um, if you're an expert, why are, why is 70% of the population overweight or obese? You know, right. why, um, why is that, why is there a hundred million either pre-diabetic or diabetic people in the USA? Um, they all have dentists. So at some point, 
a dentist, are we not doing what we need to do to help people get better? Because right. food enters through the mouth, unless you're G2 fed or, or, or IV fed. And so this is the gateway right here. We have to understand probably one of the most important aspects of what the mouth does is masticate. So if we don't understand the, the, the common threads and the foundational principles of nutrition, we are just basically fixing stuff and going, good luck with the nutrition, good luck with the diet. Right. And they're going downhill because the number one inflammatory source in our, in our lives is eating infl inflammatory foods, eating food that doesn't serve us well. Right. So this is why it's confusing. People think that they, they're experts because they eat. Two, they're listening to all the fad diets, which come and go. In the 80s, they said eggs were bad. Now they're saying up to three or four a day is fine for healthy people. So um, anyway, today, I, 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 Kurt, with you, I, I want to bring some clarity and set up a, a mask or um, a ph philosophical mindset mask, which helps people make a steer a better journey, chair side when they're talking to patients. Yeah. Now I, I did not, we did not talk about this before going live, but I want to ask you this question. My wife and I went to the Cooper clinic years ago, which was the most comprehensive exam that, you know, and it was amazing. Now I was speaking with uh, Kenneth and Tyler and they said this 70% of a human being's health is related to what they put in the hole under their nose. Would you agree with that? Disagree with that? I mean, everybody has their thoughts on this, but I, it was at that moment and he was trying to help me understand how important the dental profession was to keeping everybody else healthy. Comment on that. Okay. Yeah, for sure. And obviously there's a point counterpoint. Like every time someone says this is the most important thing, people say, hey, how about breathing? Right. Uh, how about movement? Right. Cause rigor mortis, when people don't move and they don't feel a pulse, that's a sign of life is gone. You're doing CPR. So, um, so 70%, I would say that's a very good foundational set of the sale, but there's more to it, but definitely, um, it's almost impossible to be healthy if you're eating fast food all day, not eating vegetables, not drinking water and, you know, drinking alcohol daily to excess. So, um, I would say 70% for sure. It's probably the, the number one inflammatory source in most people's lives. I mean, we think of inflammation, think of overweightness and obesity, which is 70% of North America. So it's about 280 million people um, are overweight or obese, which means they're inflamed. And when you're inflamed, the body's in incapable of being fully healthy because part of getting healthy and part of the body working well is to do it in uh, an environment where there's no inflammation going on. But when there's background chronic inflammation for being overweight or obese, the body is hampered. It's like playing tennis with, with one hand uh, behind your back and that your, your good hand, you know, you're not right. your, 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 your dominant hand. Yeah. So that being said, um, uh, every, 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 everything you and I say is to get people to take action. Like people always think, Ooch, you know, t tell me exactly what I got to do. I can't sum it up in 45 minutes. You and I are going to talk we about it. <laughs> well, the thing is, if people actually listen to this 45 minutes and actually implemented it, I, I'm not going to guarantee it personally, but I could say, I guarantee you could get another decade of life. You can get another decade if you go from being obese back to your high, ideal weight. You can go another decade if you start eating a salad a day. You can have another de decade of life if you eat more fruit and vegetables. You can have more decade if you, if you cut out a lot of the fast food in your life. So you think, Uch, how can you tell me that? Well, the last 10 years of most people's lives is spent with almost, where well, they spend 80% of their medical costs. And it's simply about being, being too heavy, too slow, eating the wrong food, being inactive. So th this 45 minutes, it, it's worth its weight in gold, if you ask me. It'll give people another 10 years. And even if they're going to do 10 years, if they're going to do it anyway, it would make it so they'd actually be able to enjoy them because they'll have mobility, no pain, clarity, no brain fog, uh, mm -hmm. those kind of things. Yeah, I totally agree. You got me on the apples thing and I got apples everywhere. And sometimes, you know, it's really easy to grab the pretzels or you could grab the apple. And I'm like, oh, Ooch, you're in my head all the time. So break this down for us. Let's go through each one of these. What's the first thing dentists need to know about nutrition? Okay, I'm talking calories because everyone thinks calories, right? Everyone thinks calories. I'm on a diet, calories. So people say, I'm going to start eating healthy. I'm cutting calories. Okay, you're cutting calories. However, do you know what you're cutting down to? Um, some of my naturopathic doctor friends and my osteopathic doctor friends share that it, if you start eating healthy stuff, it'll displace the, the poor quality stuff in your life and your body will be satisfied easier. Anytime we're eating a lot of garbage food, nutritionally poor food, a lot of artificial sweeteners, canned food, box food. What happens is the body's appetite keeps saying, please feed me. And you got to think, Ooh, how that works. The minute you start eating better quality, 
the body gets satisfied easier. That's why Godiva chocolates comes in little pieces because you get satisfied easy. You, you have those little kisses with the twists on them. You need a thousand to, to stop your hunger. You eat some of these, you know, imitation ice creams. I'm eating a gallon. Meanwhile, you give me Ben and Jerry's. I need like a little, a little personal pack to make me happy. So the more, the better quality your food, the more your caloric intake will be regulated on its own. So right. the, the first step of this is understand about calories and how we've been misled into thinking we all have to eat less. Meanwhile, you eat better, eating less will happen automatically because your body will stop searching for nutrition. Right. Now go a little bit deeper than that because everybody has a number on calories. I've been with you at dental, you know, conferences and you and I will go through the food line at the speakers with the speakers lounge. And, you know, I'm trying to, I'm like, oh my gosh, this morning. And I look at your plate and it is this high with meat and vegetable. I'm like, ooch, like that's got to be a ton of calories while I'm trying to be, just be better. Can you talk? It's not necessarily what we normally think. Like, give us an idea of what I would normally think is okay. daily cal caloric intake. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll keep hitting at the calorie thing because that seems like people's, people's biggest misstep is the calories. Um, so when you see me with a big plate of food, realize it's not any one meal that makes people fat or, or unhealthy. It's meals eaten every day for a decade to make you unhealthy. So that's why at a speaker lounge, I could load it up with the most unhealthy food and mess with everyone's minds because I don't eat like that all the time. But just to show and not make people crazy, I will eat healthier. But if you're eating a lot of nutrition dense, so nutrition dense, volume high, that's why you think my plate is crowded and calorie light. If when you go nutrition dense, volume high, which means lots of fiber, lots of vegetables, lots of salad, all of a sudden I can put a slab of meat on there and it looks like my plate is spilling over total calories, maybe 500 right. compared to uh, maybe a Big Mac, fries and a shake, which is pretty dense but calorie high, 1,100 calories. And I, would, I could probably eat one of those probably in eight minutes. But the meals that you and I, you see me eat in the speaker lounge is, um, it might take me 20 minutes because it's volume high, nutrition high, calorie dense. So yeah. it takes a lot of chewing and eating. So chewing and eating, think dentistry. Chewing and eating, think good occlusion. Chewing and eating, think uh, a good uh, a result with your Invisalign. You know, all your, all your quadrants restored. So the minute a patient's missing a quadrant, I'm thinking, um, they call it being a dental cripple. I'm not sure how politically direct saying a dental cripple is. But when you're missing a quadrant, what it means basically, now you're chewing on one side. And now basically you've actually created, um, when you talk about physically challenged, you're orally challenged and you won't chew as well. Because most people chew the same amount of times, whether they have eight teeth or 30 teeth. Right. And some people have an easy time getting healthy because they're digesting, absorbing their food better. Yeah. And you know, this, it doesn't always have to be boring too. Cause some of the time, some of the, you know, dieting is just hard. You're like, Oh, now I got to eat boring. I, you know, I, I can't have beer. You can still have fun. Like I've been with you and you've had tequila. You can still enjoy certain things, you know, where you don't have to give up everything. Correct. Yeah, exactly. The muscle is, is the biggest, uh, uh, is the biggest organ in the body. People thought I think it was skin at 10% of the body weight. This is Dr. Oz from 2007. Bento Pedersen, uh, 2012, and Copenhagen Human Performance Center showed that muscle is the biggest organ, which is almost half of male or female's body. Whether you're Arnold Schwarzenegger, um, uh, uh, Melania Trump, uh, Kurt Behrendt, Ucho Diatu, muscle is about half our body weight. But what happens is, though, if you have a little bit more, you have the most energetically starved body. It's a, it's like, it's, muscle acts like a glucose intake. It acts like a loofah sponge. So if I have more muscle, like, you know, I have more muscle, what happens is when I eat food, it's like if you drop something wet on, the, on, the, on your, your, your granite or, 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 or your counter and you try and mop it up with, it, with, an, a, with a piece of paper, it's impossible. That's someone with no muscle. But someone with muscle, it's like a loofah sponge or the best paper towel. And you can soak up that glucose so much easier. So if you want to have an easier time handling those occasional insults like tequila shots at a after the, the conference or if you want to handle the dessert with a friend or a birthday party if you want to handle the pizza i'll eat pizza you have a little bit more muscle your muscles become a loofah sponge for glucose it's yeah. the biggest store of glucose is glycogen so the more muscle you have the better you can handle glucose and you're thinking what does that got to do with health well um diabetes which is basically um 100 million americans are pre-diabetic or diabetic so that's 100 million out of 300 million Basically, um, the majority of things of diabetics will leave the planet 10 years earlier by 
It's that the average diabetic um, poorly manages, he leaves the planet 10 years earlier. Um, cardiovascular disease is the number one killer. And it's inflammation, nicks in the arteries, too much sugar. The body's uh, pancreas is unable to pump out insulin and sop up all that glucose, simply because the person has lost muscle. And the average person after 30 loses 1% every year. So you get the 60, 70 year old dentist with, you know, they've lost almost 40% of the muscle. Now when they have everything they eat, they get a bit of a glucose spike and it lingers longer than if someone is healthier, leaner, and more active. Right. And I, I notice whenever in weight training of any kind, you're always starving. Like I always find myself way more hungry when doing the weights versus just the cardio type of yes. thing. So yeah. um, I want to go to topic number two, because I just started this last year and it's the intermittent fasting thing. Cause you introduced us to it. This is a big thing. Like it's very, it's very effective, right? Yeah. Intermittent fasting is amazing. It's um, it's been around, fasting's been around for a while. You know, um, think of religious history thousands of years ago, Yom Kippur, Ramadan, and the Catholic tradition on Friday night with fish and, and not eating certain foods at, on Friday. So the whole idea about fasting is that it gives the body a break from digestion. Um, in human history, you go back a million years, well, like, think of little, uh, the little Australopithecus, that little, that first little human, uh, she was four feet tall. Um, we, we had feasts and famine, feasts and famine. Our physiology doesn't know eating six meals a day. If, the fact that we're eating six meals a day uh, for the last million years in human history, that's basically only a blip in the, in the, in the, in, in the how many million years human beings have been around for. So anytime we fast, anytime we don't eat, the body goes, hey, just like it was a million years ago. Hey, just like it was 100,000 years ago. And the body works better. Anytime we give our bodies a break from digestion, the body works better. We're not supposed to shovel food in all the time. You know, snacking is a huge industry. You know, um, meat snacks, corn dog snacks. People, people you, can, you can snack with it. You know, you walk around some of these amusement parks, people have a, a two pound thing of turkey just snacking away, thinking, wow, this is a great snack. I'm eating paleo. You're not supposed to be eating for three hours, you know, unless you had a starvation diet because your tribe wasn't eating 100,000 years ago. So intermittent fasting is very much physiologically compatible. And they've actually shown intermittent fasting, any schedule, whether you're missing a, a meal or whether you do 16 and 8 or 20 and 4, 12 and 12, is really good for the human body. It takes right. a bit of discipline, but like dentists know, we're the very disciplined people. Add a little discipline to your eating. It'll pay off in getting that stomach flat. You'll get the six squares on the front. You'll get a bicep vein. You'll look 15 years younger. You'll practice another 10 years without pain. It's a beautiful thing when you handle the food thing. It's a beautiful yeah. thing. If you can work 10 more years. Average dentist making two, 300 grand a year. What's that worth? $3 million. So by listening to today, the average dentist who can practice 10 more years, it's, it's, this 45 minutes is worth $3 million. $3 million, right. Kurt. That's the value right. we're giving today. Yeah, it's awesome. And um, you got me going on, I use an app called Zero, and then I time it type of thing. But give us an idea. Like if I've never done intermittent fasting, and I'm a dentist, like how would that work? Do you stop eating in the evening? And then I try to go through the whole day. How do you do it during the course of your day? Yeah, you know, and, and experts often argue about the exact timing, you know, 16 and 8, 20 and 4, 12 and 12. We still don't know enough about it. The fact that every, every 20 years, nutritionists look back and go, wow, we were hopeless 20 years ago. Looking back now on the fat was bad in the 80s. Everything, the, the decade of the 80s, fat was bad, carbs were good. People had big plates of pasta, was artificial sugar, tons of sugar and things because people gave up fat. It was a very toxic decade. Between 1980 and 2015, the average American has gained 11 kilograms. We are almost 20 pounds heavier from the 80s, since, simply because of these, these diets that come and go. Even intermittent fasting, if we radically adhere to it, 50 years from now, they'll be laughing at the naivety at how we were putting it in. If we've, only, we've only scratched the surface of nutrition. As much as I know, as much as any nutritionist knows, a dietitian knows, we've right. still only scratched the surface. Just like back in the, I was talking to a patient yesterday. Um, she was one of the first programmers and she walked around university in the 70s with um, Fortran and, and uh, Fortran cards. And they thought they were geniuses, big rooms full of computers. And now the average eight-year-old on their old iPhone 8 has more computer power than a 70s full of mountain room full. Nutrition is the same way. 50 years from now, they'll be laughing at the, at, at the elementary way that we're handling food. But all we can do is do what we can. Right? M.I. Angelo mm -hmm. said, do what you can with what you got until you know better. And when you know better, you can do better. Yeah. Right? So yeah. when people try and find the be all and end all, and, and I love you know, Seattle study clubs. You know, these are the, the, the keenest dentists in the world. They're in the front row. They got a personal trainer beside them, a virtual assistant on the other side, spouse on the other side. 
all learning together. Uch, what's the best way? What's the number one way? What's the most important antioxidant? I'm saying you start getting what is the best. We're going to be proven wrong 20 years from now. Right. So let's just look for guiding principles. So don't eat all day. Three right. meals, three snacks a day, not a good idea. If you miss a meal, don't panic. So if you miss, if you miss lunch and you work through lunch because you had to redo a case or you had to make it new, new couple of provisionals, just think instead of thinking I'm starving, I'm doing intermittent fasting. Wow. I'm lowering inflammation in my gut. I'm actually, I'm, I'm going to become more hormonally uh, balanced by the, time, by the time afternoon comes around. So missing a meal is not such a bad thing. Missing right. breakfast used to be like the sin. Now they're saying for different body types, you can miss a breakfast. Obviously you can't miss breakfast if you're diabetic, but missing breakfast for most people a couple of days a week is intermittent fasting and life-changing if you're suffering from a metabolic disease and inflammation being the one fallout and chronic inflammation sabotages almost everyone's health over time. Wow. And it is amazing. Once you got me started on this, I could make, I was thinking I couldn't make it through lunch and now it's a breeze. The first two weeks are always hard. You're like, oh, I'm starving. But then you train the body like, I'm good. I'm good till the end of the day. It's amazing how the body responds. And, and you don't have to miss breakfast every day. We're talking a couple of days a week because most of us overeat all day, every day. So even start, I'm always a big believer, inch by inch, this is a cinch, yard by yard, it's hard. So start by just doing two days a week where you miss breakfast. Again, if you're diabetic, obviously you got to look at your blood sugar and, and look at, you know, talk to your healthcare provider. But for healthy people, most, most people, um, missing a couple days a week breakfast, experiment with your energy level, experiment with what you eat then at lunch and dinner, and experiment right. with how you look after two or three weeks. Because anytime the body is not eating, the body is healing. When you're, when you're eating, one of the, the biggest users of energy is mastication. Digestion, all 26 feet of our intestines, takes a ton of energy. That's why most people are tired after any big meal. So anytime you, you, you don't eat, the body is better able to manage what's going on inside. It lowers inflammation. You get better absorption of nutrients because the body then can focus on absorption rather than digestion. There's, there's two aspects of food. One is mastication, digestion, and then absorption. People talk about what you eat. It's what you absorb that counts. And if you're missing some meals every now and then and eating in smaller amounts of time, the body's more efficiently able to digest and absorb nutrients. And it's life-changing. So you could be in your 40s looking like you're in your 20s. Um, I'm in my 50s now, uh, chin-ups 15 or 20. I'll go into the gym. I'm working out with guys half my age and they think I'm some kind of elite athlete. I'm like, no, I'm, I work out in my spare time with, with a, a random intuitive with, uh, pr uh, program. I'm a dentist and they're like, how's that possible? You're older than my dad and you're stronger than me. Are you, you know, do you work out two hours a day? Never more than an hour. And then I got these crowd of 20 year olds asking me, okay, doc, tell me what's going on. Yeah. And I'm like, come to my office as a new patient, I'll tell you. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I don't get my new patients like that. But it's funny, they're like, hey, my dentist knows nothing about this. My dentist knows nothing about saliva and digestion, absorption and intermittent fasting. Can I get your card? So I'm always giving out my location because people are fascinated by a dentist knowing about nutrition. And yeah. I'm espousing as much as a dentist would know because we take about 22 hours in our four years. We know enough to talk nutrition, but we always think it's outside our scope of practice. Oh, I'm doing keto. I'm doing paleo. I'm doing Dukin. I'm doing Weight Watchers. Like, I'm doing Nomi or Numi. You know. So we look at foundational principles. It's amazing how good we can sound in front of a, a new person. And they're thinking, give me your card. I've never heard anyone talk about this before. If you're a dentist, my family's coming to see you. And that's how quick those things happen. So when you talk about guiding principles rather than details, it's amazing how attractive that sounds. Yeah, that's awesome. So let's talk about number three. We're actually going to talk about teeth as one of the components in nutrition. Tell us your, your perspective on that. Well, you know, you know, as a dentist, we know about teeth. We know about curve of Wilson, the curve of speed. We know about restoring arches. We know that, you know, um, replacing, if you have a missing tooth, replacing with individual implants is better than doing bridges, better than partials, better than leaving them alone. Anytime you have solid eating tools, you, you will chew better. So when I I'm talking teeth, I don't just talk, most people come into the dentist to get out of pain. You'd be surprised when people actually think, I don't need to go to the dentist, my teeth are fine. Why? They don't hurt. So um, getting out of pain or appearance is the most common reason why people come see us. However, you start talking about chewing better, you start talking about the reason why teeth are designed a certain way. People are floored when you talk about, people think, wow, like what kind of Kung Fu Panda dentist are you? I say, yeah, the incisors are basically to cut and sever. And then it goes back to, wider teeth and then broader teeth for chewing purposes. People go, I've never heard that before. How come I'm 60? I've never heard that before. 
So patients love it when we talk about old school dental anatomy. You know, so you talk about chewing function. You talk about the fact that they're missing their first year, their, their six year molar on one side, and how now they chew more differentially on the other side, and how that's hampering their mastication. And if they're not chewing better, it means they're not absorbing food better, which means accelerated aging, um, increased amount of calories eaten. Because if you're, if you and I, so Kurt, if you had 12 teeth and I had 28 teeth, we ate the same food, you'll be hungrier later because even though we ate the same calories, um, you will need more because you, your body wasn't able to break it down and absorb the nutrients. So you will still be hungry. So 28 teeth, the body's better able to cue in and the body's able to better decipher they've eaten and able to absorb the nutrients. So full arch cases, it makes sense to me. So we start talking to patients and you can make difficult dental anatomy. And the reason why teeth are designed a certain way to chew better and absorb nutrients better, we seem like some kind of sensi, like some kind of Lao Tzu talking about um, making sense of the body. Cause it's still a mystery. Right. If you ask the average person, which, which side is your liver on? I've got an MBA. I have no which side my liver's on, but if the liver ever left them, they'd be in toast. You know, people don't often know actually the heart's actually more in the center than on the left side. We don't understand the body. It didn't come with a manual. It didn't come with an instruction guide. And the, when, when you don't have a good guide, you end up with chronic disease, um, pre-diabetic, diabetic, diabetic um, aches and pains that don't go away. And, and then we try and explain to patients about nutrition and overall health. And we ourselves have a hip that hurts. We have reflux. We have um, a fading memory. So I think when we're better able to lead the way, I always say you can't take a patient on a journey that you haven't been on. So get in shape first right? or be on that journey first. Now that patient can listen to you because you have a, a more authentic voice when you're communicating about total body health. Right. And we're talking about total body health. Talk about this. The absence of teeth as people age. This is where I feel like you get to talk to dentists all the time. They're like, oh, they look in this finite world. There's only so many dentists. It's only so many patients. Well, the biggest problem we have as a, we've got a lot of challenges is the aging population. I mean, one in three babies that's born today will actually live to be 100 right now in Japan. Adult diapers are out selling children's diapers. Like we're getting older. Talk about how important dentists will be when you talk about number three, which is teeth or the absence of teeth when people age. My mom is 20 years older than me. When she breaks a tooth, it's the end of the world. Like she can't eat, she can't function. Mm -hmm. Dentists are going to be busy for a long time. Don't you yeah, think? I, yeah, I get it. I get it for sure. And I think, um, Dennis always worried about the, the, the small patient pool. Um, I think someone's saying that um, half the patients only go to the dentist once a year. So uh, the other half go when they, they're in, when they need to. So 160 million North Americans uh, go less than once a year. They're open season on those patients. So you can totally get them in. But when you're talking teeth and aging and aging population, obviously there's the graying of America, the graying of Canada. I think they have the most dental concerns. They have the largest amount of multi-surface uh, amalgams and composite fillings that are most often likely going to fracture off an endo-treated crown. And now they need an implant or crown lengthening on a new, new crown. I think when we start looking at patients as the fact that as they get older, the needs come up. Like a brand new Porsche needs high maintenance, but a 10-year-old Porsche needs premium maintenance. You, you need that aficionado, uh, that person with a, an overall vision of how teeth are supposed to look. So... The aging population, their needs are more. Everyone wants to look and feel good. You know, look at Biden, 77, Trump, 74, uh, Sylvester Sloan, 76, Rod Stewart, 75, Arnold, 73. No one's going away. They're working. You know, Trump says, I'll see you in four years. I'm like, he's going to be 77. He's not saying God willing. So these baby boomers, you know, people born between 1947 and 1965, they have high expectations for their minds, for their careers. They're not letting go. So we got to help them know teeth are much more than looking great in your headshot. It's right. about uh, digesting and absorbing food better. And whoever absorbs food better is going to have less inflammation, longer life, better mental clarity, flatter stomach, possibly of a six pack and more hormonal balance, testosterone, you know, estrogen, pr progesterone, growth hormone, you, hormonal, hormonal balance needs ideal foods being brought in. And because one in five restaurants, only one in five restaurants, uh, actually, sorry, my, my, my fact there. Oh, one in three Americans actually eats junk food every day. So one in three Americans eats junk food every day. So that being said, we are in desperate need of information about nutrition. And we're in desperate need about keeping care of these pearly whites much more than the headshot or the, or the Instagram selfie. Right, right. Now let's go to number four, the absorption. It's saliva on the nutrition side. A lot of people don't associate saliva with nutrition. Talk about that. Yeah, dry mouth is something that people get when they're nervous. 
and then my mouth is dry. Um, and I think most dentists know that two thirds of all prescription medication and over-the-counter medication, dry mouth is a side effect, xerostomia. And xerostomia for most people think of as more of a thing of, it's, I am having trouble talking and I got to sip water more often, or I'm having trouble swallowing food. You know, you give a patient a slice of bread and if they need water to swallow the bread, they have xerostomia. But most people don't notice they have dry mouth until they've lost 50% of the saliva in the mouth. By that point, digestion has been delayed. The, pop, the, the stomach's making more acid to digest this poorly swallowed food. Um, people don't realize in saliva, there's something called a purifin. Uh, and I didn't know this until about two years ago. A purifin is a morphine-like um, pain control medic pain control chemical that's in our saliva. It's called a purifin. They say it's even stronger than morphine. It's in a very small amount. So when you're salivating, the body is in, in one way is looking at, is trying to give you pain relief. So this is powerful stuff. You know, the saliva is much more than just something that helps you wet your whistle. Digesting food, speaking, clearing food from the, from the, the, the into proximal, you know, just food getting stuck and people unable to um, enjoy a post meal conversation because of dry mouth. But is there a dry mouth solution? A number of them, but again, a lot of them in experimental stages, you know, artificial saliva, xylomelts, you know, bio, uh, periosciences has something, um, uh, biotin, I think GlaxoSmithKline bought biotin. So there's a few saliva stimulators, but you, you still can't replace the thing. Someone actually told me saliva is almost like your blood because it, it's like blood without the pigment. That's how they're able to do DNA tests with saliva swabs. Like saliva, saliva, it needs to be your friend. I remember there was one professor at University of Manitoba back in the eighties when I went there. He was the king of saliva. I can't even, um, I can't even think of his name now. <laughs> But he lectured all over the world and we're all like, gross. What's the big deal about saliva? I'm, I'm a dental student. It, it ties it all together. It yeah. ties it all together. Yeah. Talk about this. I, and, and again, I'm speaking way outside of my circle, but there was a great dentist who's a friend of mine, Dan Rosen, years ago in Austin, Texas. He would test the pH balance in kids after eating breakfast. Some of them eating like pancakes, others eating a little bit more of a balance. And he would show the difference of the composition of the saliva and how it affected them throughout the course of the day. It's not so much just that the fact that you have saliva, it's the composition of the saliva, right? Yeah, it's, it's dry mouth, it's alkalinity, acidity. They just said, if someone snacks six meals a day, they have six acid challenges every time they eat. That's why if you just eat three meals a day or two meals a day, you have less acid challenges. So less cariogenic diet is, 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 a, is an intermittent fasting diet. So um, alkalinity and those little testers see if someone's acid or, or, or alkaline, maybe a little bit beyond, you know, the, the, the trusted science of what you teach in universities. Um, I know my naturopath talks about those and osteopath talks about those. And it, it, I think it just makes it a little bit confusing. People start talking about litmus paper. Patients are confused enough. I remember this, what my mom who loved nutrition at age 70 says, I thought calcium and, and vitamin C was the same thing. And she goes, cause they first start with C. So my cute little mom knows tons about healthy eating thought calcium and vitamin C was the same thing. So right. you, br you bring alkalinity and, and acid testers in the mouth, anything that makes nutrition more complicated, patients drift away from. Right. So when I talk about common threads, and, I, and I'm glad you brought the subject because I'm sure the dentist out there is saying, I, I test with litmus paper. Well, go ahead. You know, it's like the guys who, who, who are on diets and they're putting this litmus paper in the midstream urine. Where the hell is midstream urine? But they put litmus paper in the midstream urine to see if they're in ketosis. I'm like, I'm... I've never done that. I did it once when I was 19 and I was a little off the rocker thinking I want to get lean, but it has very little to do with sustaining a healthy diet because anything that's complicated is not sustainable. Right. So if your diet is measuring um, litmus paper, midstream urine, doing all kinds of tests, it's not sustainable. Like when I look at my patients who are in their nineties, good teeth, my hundred year old patients, I said, what brought you to this day? I eat porridge every morning. What's your fitness thing? I've been walking my whole life. You know, people who, who win it for the long haul seem to have sustainable, easy, doable activity and nutrition habits. Yeah. So when people talk about keto, paleo, 16 and 8, 12 and 12, are you going to do that for the next decade? Anything you can't do for a decade, why are you doing it all? Like it's right. got to be sustainable, doable and easy. Sustainable, doable and easy makes it something you can do over a whole lifetime. And then you'll get the results. It's like compound interest. You know, you stop putting a thousand bucks a month aside. Most dentists go, it's been four months. How much money do you have? You have $4,100, you know, but you've put a thousand bucks aside for 30 years. Now you've got a, a two, $3 million. So right. eating, doing doable, easy things daily that are sustainable is like compound interest. And then just understand that one. But you make, you make, you make 
challenging, where you make dieting challenging. All of us now, it's like checking your checking a, a little seed you just planted. Hey, nothing's going on yet. Give it 100 years, it'll become an oak tree. I know, but three days in, how's it doing? So we become very impatient with our health changes, but um, compound interest, think about long haul nutrition. Yeah. Any, anything I do now, it's stuff that I could do for the next 10, 20, 30 years. Anything I want to do for the next seven days, what's the point of it? Like, what is the point of it? Yeah. Amen, brother. We got to keep things simple here. So in number five, talk about, perform, you mentioned performance nutrition as a big component of the overall nutrition conversation. What does that mean? Well, well 85% of the population doesn't exercise. 85% of the population doesn't exercise. 85% of dentists, 85% of our patient pool, only 15% exercise with enough intensity and regularity to say they're athletes or they exercise. So they have different nutritional needs than the layperson who's basically struggling with their belly over their belt. But when you have, you know, when you think about it, performance nutrition is anyone who wants next level. And most dentists have barely treading water with nutrition. So you get an athlete in the chair, they just don't know. You gotta know what is, what's one of the best books on nutrition. Have it at your fingertips. You gotta have access to dietitians and performance coaches in your area so you could, you could be the referral source. If you're the referral source, I'll get a mother coming in, you know, my 14 year old son plays hockey. He's, he's drinking Gatorade. I wanted to see if I can get him onto something else. Does my kid really need the Gatorade? And is it bad for his teeth? Most dentists go, well, as long as it's artificially sweetened, it should be fine. Um, but, but, but have access to the referral of a dietitian or performance nutrition coach in your area. That'll be, now you're seeing as a trusted advisor. Now, now I'm helping out a family. And I don't have to be the buck stops me. I don't have to micromanage this family's nutrition device. All I got to know is understand the basics, but have people I refer to. Guess what happens when you refer to dietitians and performance nutritionists in your area? What happens is they refer back to you. You refer to chiropractors. You refer to, to um, sports medical doctors. They refer back to you. This is powerful stuff. It goes beyond getting good Google reviews. It's understanding how you can help patients not be the, the person that understands all nutrition. So as a dentist, if I had a performance nutrition question, I could probably stick handle uh, probably up 90% of it. But even I myself have people in my area. We have a wellness center just down the hall from our office where they do nutritional coaching. There's a couple of naturopathic doctors there. And I refer to them. And now I seem like the hero. I've taken the mystery out of the referral. Come to me and go, oh, look online. Look online. My dentist says there's a naturopathic doctor just down the hall that's very good with athletes. And now I'm a trusted advisor. A great way to, to cement that relationship and build a better lifetime bond with people which is basically I want patients for 20, 30 years, not for the short term. Yeah, that's awesome. There are people that fix teeth and there are people that change lives. And that's what you're talking about, making a big impact on people. Now, I, you know, I get a lot of things wrong. So, you know, listening to you, I'm, I'm always motivated, always inspired. What do you think most people get wrong just from the get-go when it comes to nutrition or dentists? Like what's the, you get to talk to a lot of people. I know you're coaching people on nutrition. When you're out there on the road, what are, what's the number one thing they get wrong with nutrition? Most, most of them, when they want to eat healthy, they, they cut calories. They cut calories. So cutting calories is not that good of an idea. I'd rather increase my activity, keep my calories the same. I'd rather, and I've done this before with my coaching, keep your calories the same, just tweak the quality of the food. So keep your 2,500 calories a day the same, but change them. And now all of a sudden, those 2,500 calories are hard to stuff in because you're eating a salad, you're eating a, a sweet potato. You're eating more fiber. So now they're saying, hey, I can't even finish all my food. The calories are the same. They've just changed the quality of the food. So when you start changing food quality, it's easier to stay on a healthy diet because the food quality improves and now you automatically lower calories. Do you know the people that go on a plant-based diet, not necessarily strictly vegan or vegetarian, but people go on a mostly plant-based. So I'd say 70% plants, 30% food. Right away, they have a 300 calorie a day deficit in their calories. So even if you start eating more vegetables and you try and eat the same amount of food, what happens is you're in a 300 calorie a day deficit, which adds up to losing one pound of fat a month in a year. That's 12 pounds of body fat. That looks great on anyone from a speaker to a writer, to a lecturer, to a mom, to a dad, to an athlete. And that's also just by eating a few more vegetables, eating a few more vegetables a day, right away, the body becomes a better fat burner. It increases the metabolism by 11%. But also, you, you have a 300-calorie deficit, which automatically makes you start losing up to a, a pound of body fat every month just by eating more vegetables. So the number one mistake is cutting calories to get healthy. Cutting calories has no place in, in 2021. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Well, give us a couple uh, good words as we wrap this up. I know I only get you so, for so long, and I know you're a busy guy, but... <laughs> 
Give us some uh, some final words on how dentists can put nutrition together for themselves and their patients. Well, I- I've never fe- followed one particular diet over 10 years. I eat very intuitively. The whole idea is some of the masters actually, Michelangelo wouldn't actually tell you um, how many hours a, day, hours a day you should paint to do what he does. He, he goes, I'll, do, I'll, I'll paint until. So I'm a very intuitive person. When you think of Stephen Covey's unconscious competence, I'm in that fourth level, not bragging, of all humility, I've gotten there by struggle. I can show you my before picture, but I'm unconsciously competent now at eating healthy. So um, one way they could actually do it is to learn the language. So join me on Instagram. Instagram is where I shine. I've posted maybe 4,400 posts in the last eight years. Um, I still answer direct messages, but I post about two or three times a day. It's all cool stuff. It's all the different articles that I read. I'm certified in a couple of different personal training organizations. I get the latest journals. So I make sense of probiotics. I make sense of intermittent fasting. I showcase a, 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 four, a four ingredient breakfast that can be made in four minutes. So by making it doable, easy, and I share it, people ask me questions. That's the best way to learn is to learn the vocabulary. So join me on Instagram so we can keep the conversation going like Oprah after the show, okay? Yeah. So um, join me on Instagram. So my, my Instagram name is um, at fit speakers, at fit speakers. So um, read the back posts direct message me, ask me the kind of why I still eat ketchup sometimes because um, organic ketchup in Canada has no high fructose corn syrup in. So regular ketchup, high fructose corn syrup. In Canada, organic ketchup made by the same company has no high fructose corn syrup. High fructose corn syrup has no shut off message for the body. So you start looking at lowering the amount of processed food, changing up the qualities of some organic if you like. Um, Follow me on Instagram, learn the vocabulary. It'll make this whole journey easier because the words will spill off naturally chair side. And I have this great article on my homepage on drucci.com. So it's a five page article I wrote with a hygienist and it's called gut healthy chair side conversations. So it's a five page article, 17 references. Um, read that article, print it up, highlight it, message me, follow me, follow the hygienist that I, I co-wrote the article with. And um, we can make this journey to, to fitness and health so much easier. So much I- more easier. I love it. Now, for the benefit of people listening to iTunes or um, Spotify, what's your website to get that article? Okay, so that's drucci.com. So D-R-U-C-H-E.com. So Dr. Uchi, D-R-U-C-H-E.com. Dr. Uchi.com. It's on the homepage. There's a few different articles available. There's one called Gut Healthy Chairside Conversation that I wrote with a hygienist. Um, the other thing, my Instagram is at Fit Speakers. So F-I-T-S-P-E-A-K-E-R-S. That's me. Um, I'm posting two or three times a day. Like some people say, why are you giving so much stuff away? Because I have so much more inside. And like the Buddhists say, if you want to let more tea into a cup, what do you got to do? You got to pour it out. So I give lots of stuff away because I'm filling my mind up with more stuff. And by sharing it, my retention goes up 90%. If I learn something new and don't tell anyone, two days later, I know 10%. But if I share something I just learned, my retention now gets sticky. It's now 90%. So because I share every week, this stuff is like glue. I dip my hand into a book. I share it. It's stuck to me like glue, you know? So, but the references are there. If they want the references, I have them. So um, uh, just learn the vocabulary. Keep the conversation going. Yeah, buddy, you're one of the greatest givers in dentistry. And I'm not a social media guy at all. Like, But in Instagram, your Instagram is great because I love when you're doing the cooking thing or you're describing something it's absolutely fascinating. And, it, you know, every time I watch it, I'm like, gosh, I got to be a little bit better, you know? So not only you're sharing, but you're also inspiring brother. Now I know you're, you're speaking the ton. You're, I would call you the most popular speaker in dentistry. Hands up. Everybody yeah. wants you to speak. You're doing, I don't even know what you're doing this week, but I also know you're doing the Seattle study club symposium. So I'm going to put up a graphic. Uh, I think it's one of the greatest events in all of CE. Can you talk about um, what this organization is symposium and what you're going to be doing at the Seattle study club symposium virtual summit? Well, I feel honored. 75, they say 75 world-class speakers. So I know Kurt, you've done that 10 times. Like you're, you're like, you're like, you're like, uh, one of the hardest working men in show business. You're like the Sammy Davis Jr. of the symposiums. So you're there every year, right? Come hell or high water. So, so it's my inaugural time. They said, Ooch, we need you there. So, um, I'm doing one program. I, th- I think I'm, it's on Saturday. Um, I'm going to be in the Q and A actually rifling through questions and answering it. Uh, my talk is, 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 a, is a, on total health for the spouse or the healthcare provider or the team member. But, you know, Dennis, they want to know about veneers and crowns and implants. 
food, nutrition is the number one thing that you got to know more about. It's, it's the why. It's the why we want to restore an arch. It's the why we want, want good intercuspation. It's the why we want pain-free joints. So I'm doing an hour on Friday. I think it's um, 7 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, so I'll be at some, some, you know, Seattle sub symposium. Um, Friday though, I'm doing a Yankee virtually. I'm Yankee. I'm in doing Yankee virtually doing a live um, exercise program at 7 a.m. in the morning, 10 o'clock, uh, patient lifestyle health. It's the same morning that I'm, that, uh, a moving truck is coming in. So I'm moving, I'm delegated. I'm no longer micromanaging, but because it's who I am, it's not memorized. It just comes out of me. So it's just like, it, it's, it's, it's who I am. So it's in those conversations that people learn that nutrition, fitness, health, inflammation, ergonomics, it should be effortless, dayable, day, doable, and daily. You know, I know people that, that, that teach ergonomics, they have like 32 stretches, 32 stretches. I know some of these experts have, haven't stretched unless they got to pick up their deposit to hand in because everyone pays in full when you get really good at dentistry at the time of prep. So, so very few dentists are stretching, but it's all about, you can simply just go, go against the wall. This is like the easiest one ever. It's all about reminding your physiology. So you go against the wall, stand up. So your back, your heels, your butt, your upper back, and your head's against the wall. You put your hands up against the wall and you slide down gently. Again, this, this could ache for some people because most people haven't put their hands above their head in a long time, but you slide up and down gently, very gently. If you have any limitations, you can see a physio, you know, go to a physiotherapist. But that's an easy reminder to your whole nervous system how it's meant to, to stand and how you're meant to work. But it's just, it's doable, easy things. If someone just does that once a day or most days, you can be well on your way enjoying a practice life um, for more than 10 more years than the average dentist just by giving your nervous system a gentle reminder. So all this and more, all this and more, I just want to develop a curiosity for dentists in looking at total patient health. Total patient health is where this is going. Wellness is where dentistry has to go. Yep, totally. I would say two things. Number one, if you haven't seen Uchi speak before, or if you have a study club and you're looking for a phenomenal speaker, Uchi is your guy. I mean, you do make this so crazy interesting. And um, I don't even know how you do what you do, but it's so energizing. And, you know, he's not slide specific type of a guy. He's very engaging. And then number two, I'm going to have you back over and over again, because that's one of the shows I want to do with you is just the, the, you know, some simple exercises just to proactively take care of your body as a dentist. That would be a great one too, because we see it too often young dentists that have a lot of pain, whether it be in their neck, their back or, or whatever. Uh, dentistry is a sport and you've got to, got to prepare for it. Well, a day of pain. I, I remember the other day, um, I think a rib and people don't talk, my chiropractor calls it when a rib comes out, a rib, not he pops out through the skin, but it, it gets out of place. You have a rib out for a day, two days, you feel older all of a sudden. And some people walk around with chronic pain all the time and they really feel their age and older. So if your neck's out, herniated disc, um, um, joint laxity, tennis elbow, meniscus tear, hip issue, it makes you feel older than you are. So you can fix it by going to the best people, you know, Egoscu in um, San Diego for back. However, prevention, preemptive strike is the best way to go. And dentists are all about prevention. We are all about prevention. So stay pain-free. And if 30, you're aching, what are you going to be like 30 years later with three practices, 4,000 patients, a staff of, you know, 35? So I think it's important to be preemptively healthy, but doing daily, easy, easy doable, sustainable stretches and exercises. So to become a no-brainer. It's all about unconscious competence is the way to go. Anytime you're actively working on something, it takes lots of energy. You want to get to unconscious competence. It's above the clouds nutrition. It's above the clouds ergonomics. It's above the clouds movement. And that's where life gets easy and effortless. It's the Richard Branson style of movement where you're just chuckling and laughing. I don't think he even carries a cell phone. That's the kind of CI I want to be. You know, above the clouds, looking at it from a global perspective, transformational. So if you're working hard, working hard, hammering it out, you know, talking to your, your, your people every day and hammering it out, that is efforting. That takes energy. Above the clouds sustainable, easy, doable, fun, effortless Amen. for a lifetime. That is awesome. Well, like I said, brother, you make our lives better every single time you share something. So I am so 
crazy grateful. Make sure you follow Ooch on Instagram. You'll love it. It's very entertaining, insightful, informative. Uh, and we're going to keep having you back over and over and over again. And if, uh, I shouldn't say if, but when seminars come back, this is your guy you want to go see. He is awesome. So, Ooch, stick around while we say goodbye to everybody else. But thank you guys for tuning in to the Best Practices Show. If you enjoyed today, which I know you did, just do us a favor. Hit the share button. Share with your friends. Keep sending us suggestions for things that you guys want to see from Ooch or from other uh, great speakers in dentistry. We're lining up now. And until we see you guys next time, keep watching the Best Practices Show. You guys enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.